The next item in our analysis is salts or conductivity. It simply refers to those free salts that are in the urine that give you an indication of what kind of salts are in the bloodstream. While we take a look at some other meters, let's talk about that perfect RBTI value of seven, 6 to 7 C, capital C, as far as measuring salts. The C stands for conductance, although you'll see in other places people think it means 100. It doesn't. It simply means the conductance expressed as values that Reams found. Bob Pike did extensive work with Reams and they decided that 700 microsiemens was the equivalent of one conductance value. So whatever microsiemen result you get, which all meters are calibrated microsiemens, you simply divide it by 700 and you have your answer. There are a world of conductivity meters out there. There's just dozens and dozens and dozens of types. Don't be afraid to locate some kind of meter that works right for you. The best meters read somewhere between 0 and 20,000 microsiemens. That will allow you to use the uh, direct or concentrated method of testing, which we'll talk about in a moment. If you're going to work up a, a C value, 6 to 7 C being perfect, and then whatever value you get, you've got to understand solutions and dilutions. Uh, just to give you a case in point, let's say I had a, a sample that was higher range than my meter. My meter would reach 20,000. I had a value of, uh, say, uh, 21,000. I could dilute that sample with 50-50 with distilled water and I would get a value of 10,500. I could then compute my seven, my um, divided by 700 to get my C value, but then I'd have to multiply that by two to get back to the, the original concentration. I know you're going to come across cheap TDS meters. They're used a lot for water testing. They are simply not appropriate for RBTI. Uh, it's possible you could get an estimate with one, but TDS meters, uh, depending on the types of metals that are involved in the uh, solids, will give you false readings. Uh, there, there's actual calibration charts that have to go with a TDS meter to show what it's doing, but you just can't use it reliably and comfortably with RBTI. Human urine comes out of the body at about 37 degrees centigrade, in other words, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 99. And temperature affects conductivity. So you're either going to have to cool the stuff to room temperature, 68 degrees, rather quickly, or you're going to have to have a way to compensate for that elevated temperature. Uh, these meters like to read at 68 degrees, that's 20 degrees centigrade. And you either have to take a thermometer and measure the urine temperature and then go to some sort of chart or compensation meter. But it's best to, uh, to find yourself an automatic temperature compensated conductivity meter so that it can just take care of this so that you don't have to worry with it. You must calibrate. You must calibrate. You cannot run any test anywhere for any reason that have impact on people's lives without constant calibration. That means that you have to buy a bottle of a known strength conductivity solution and you have to test that solution with your meter to see that you're getting a, a result that's somewhere within, let's say, one or two percent of what that solution is. In other words, if you've got a 10,000 microsiemen solution, uh, if, if your meter reads anywhere between 9,800 and 10,200, you're probably going to be okay. But if you've got a meter that's reading 7,000 or 13,000, you, you will cause trouble, big trouble, unless you can take the screwdriver and calibrate that meter to read properly for that strength solution.
it, this is vital, this is important, it, this has to be hammered into you over and over and over. Here, our model, Charlotte, is running her test. She uses the dilute solution method, which is described in uh, Dr. Beto's book. Essentially, you take 2 cc of urine, mix it with 70 cc of um, distilled water, and once you get your conductivity reading of that, then you multiply it by a certain factor to to get an actual reading and then you just drop it into the you know, knock off the two zeros and you're, you've got your C factor. Here Michael is calibrating his conductivity meter. This is so vital. You have to calibrate you don't have to calibrate each time you use the meter. You have to calibrate each day you use the meter. So if you start out in the morning, you're going to run a half a dozen tests or do half a dozen analyses, then you would get your calibration before you started to be sure your meter is um, set up well for that day and that place. Here Michael is making a reading of direct, now I'm going to use the term concentrated, but it's not. It's standard strength urine as it came out of somebody. Uh, it is not diluted, it is not concentrated, it is in its natural state. If you get a reading higher than 20,000, that's all this type meter will read up to, DIST4, it will not read above 20,000. You have to dilute the solution. Uh, you have to cut it half and half with water. 20,000 equals about oh, near 30 C, 30 salt units and you'll have to cut it half and half with water, then get your reading, then double the uh, actual reading so you know what you actually got. Did I mention calibration? Well, if I did, I'm gonna state it now. You must calibrate. You must have faith and confidence in your results, and the only way you're gonna get consistent results that make sense and that will not cause trouble is to calibrate. At that point, you'll know what you're doing. Your instructor is going to explain about salt and why it matters and what it means. But basically, it has to do with electrolytes in the body. You can't get messages from the brain to various organs without enough salt to carry the current, to carry the messages. And if you get too much, it starts damaging the arteries and the veins and the smooth muscles, the intestines. It causes them to lose their elasticity and it's a bad thing.